Good evening. We'll call the meeting to order. The meeting of the El Dorado City Commission for May 6, 2019. I have roll call, please. Mayor King. Present. Commissioner Guthrie. Here. Commissioner Lewis. Here. Commissioner Badway. Here. Commissioner Wilkinson. Present. All right. Next would be invocation. I don't know whether uh, Mr. McCoy from the First Baptist Church not here. Anyone from the audience or commission wish to lead us in invocation? If not, I will do that. Please uh, join me. Father, we thank you for this day and the many blessings we enjoy in this community of El Dorado. We ask that your presence be with our first responders and all employees as they work to do the city's work to keep our citizens safe. We ask your special blessing on this commission that we may do your work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance, please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which was its hands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Proclamations. This is a fun evening. <clears throat> Our first proclamation tonight would be the Poppy Proclamation. We do this every year. We have some visitors in the audience. Would you like to say anything about the proclamation? You introduce yourself. Well, I don't know how many of you. Well, to the, yeah, to the podium, please. I don't know how many of you know about the American Legion Auxiliary, but we are a hard-working group, and we do a lot of good. We sponsored four families at Christmas, took the gifts. We wrapped them and took them to the little families that needed them. We got scholarships, we have a nurse's scholarship, but the poppies are very special to us. Used to be they were made by veterans, but unfortunately we don't have enough veterans anymore to make them. So they're asking people to help make them. But I brought this little deal. Uh, the poppies originated back World War One, and your mayor went to see Flanders Field is where the poppies grow. And, but I'm gonna read you this little poem. It's short, but says everything. It says, such sacrifice through valor made, a debt too deep to be repaid. From their courage, freedom born, to remember them, a poppy worn. So we'd like for you all to remember us when we're on the street corner passing out. The poppies are not, we do not sell them. They are a donation only. And we stand on many store corners and collect the money. But I want to tell you a little story about last year. We're at Dillon's with the poppies and a platoon from Somewhere in Missouri came through with their trucks and stuff. They stopped at Dillon's to get gas and stuff. They were on their way to Fort Riley. And the boys all came in and we gave them a poppy. A lot of them never heard of a poppy. We thought that was quite unique to be able to do something like that for our service bid. But anyway, we'd just like for you to remember us every year in May, okay? Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> She's correct. I did have a chance to visit Flanders Field about a month and a half ago, and it's a, it's a pretty amazing and humbling place. I would report that, to my amazement, um, the people of Belgium uh, were still, to this day, very thankful for, uh, for all of the Allied forces that helped uh, in that conflict. So it was, uh, it was humbling. It was... Uh, nice experience changes changes the way you think about this proclamation today so I will read the proclamation whereas the American Legion auxiliary adopted the poppy as its memorial flower which pays tribute to the war dead and aids the living veterans and their families and whereas the poppy as a memorial for the American war dead is a tradition which began in the years following the First World War 
and whereas the contributions are used solely for children and youth and veterans affairs and rehabilitation in our local community. Now therefore I, Vince Haynes, Mayor of the City of El Dorado, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2019 as Poppy Month in the City of El Dorado, Kansas. As an expression of gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. In witness thereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the official seal of the city of El Dorado to be affixed this sixth day of May, 2019. I will present this to you. Can I get a picture of you with the lady, sir? Or do you want it? <laughs> Maybe what do you want us to do? Well, I can you stand right here. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next proclamation we have today is um, certainly equally important. Um, as it uh, is a proclamation for our public servants. Public Service Week Proclamation. Anybody wish to speak in your specifically on? Being none, I'll go ahead and, and uh, read through the proclamation for Public Service Week. Whereas Americans are served every single day by public servants at the federal, state, county, and city levels, the unsung heroes do the work to keep our nation working. Whereas public employees take not only jobs, but oaths. Whereas many public servants include military personnel, police officers, firefighters, border patrol officers, embassy employees, healthcare professionals, professionals, and others risk their lives each day in service to people of the United States and around the world. Whereas public servants include local, state, and federal, I heard straight that, I'm sorry. No, whereas public servants include local, state, and federal government employees, teachers, health professionals, and countless other occupations. Day in and day out, they provide the diverse services demanded by the American people of their government with efficiency and integrity. And whereas, without these public servants at, at every level, continuity would be impossible in a democracy that, that regularly changes its leaders and elected officials. Now, therefore, I, the mayor of the city of El Dorado, do hereby announce and proclaim to all citizens and set here to, a set seal here to, that May 5 through 11 is Public Service Recognition Week. All citizens are encouraged to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of government employees at all levels, federal, state, county, and city. In witness there, thereof, I have here to set my hand and cause the official seal of El Dorado to be affixed this sixth day of May, 2019. So this is Public Service Week. Next recognition we have would be the AAA Tra Traffic Safety Award to, to the Police Department.
Good evening, everyone. Um, Mayor Haynes, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Sean Stewart with AAA Kansas, and I'm pleased to be here again to present the uh, El Dorado Police Department with the AAA Community Traffic Safety Award, uh, this one for their work in 2018. Uh, first, I want to recognize uh, Mr. Troy Wells, a uh, law enforcement liaison representing uh, Kansas Department of Transportation. Uh, Troy identifies and recommends police departments around Kansas for this award and guides their application for it. So I'd like to thank Troy for his help. <clears throat> we present uh, AAA traffic safety awards uh, to law enforcement agencies that implement programs and projects that successfully address local traffic safety issues in a cost-effective and uh, a meaningful way. El Dorado PD is one of only 30 Kansas Police Departments of all sizes to qualify for a AAA award this year. And this year, El Dorado PD has earned a Platinum Award, the highest level that AAA bestows for the department's superior efforts in traffic safety. The department is being recognized for a variety of programs and initiatives, including having a department policy requiring the use of seat belts, taking part in the monthly meetings of the Regional Operation Impact Traffic Safety Committee, participation in the state's most successful teen seatbelt usage improvement program called SAFE at El Dorado High, middle school and elementary schools, organized initiatives for enforcement of seatbelt, child safety seat and DUI laws, hosting a child passenger seat inspection station, commercial vehicle enforcement of driver safety and equipment regulations, and participation in the annual National Night Out to build community relationships and share information about crime prevention and traffic safety with the community. I wanna thank you, Mayor and Commissioners, for your support of the traffic safety work of the El Dorado PD. Uh, I'd like to recognize and thank uh, Sergeant John Thompson for his efforts uh, with traffic safety and for compiling the award application. And finally, it's a special pleasure to present uh, Chief Kurt Zeman and the men and women of El Dorado PD with the 2018 Platinum AAA Kansas Community Traffic Safety Award. Congratulations, Chief. on our agenda any personal appearances. We have uh, folks from the city band. Hi, I'm Barbara Templin. Uh, I, you want my address? 515 North West Street in Leon, Kansas. Uh, I'm here to renew the municipal band uh, agreement with the city of El Dorado. Uh, the summers are 97th season. Um, the officers for the band is President myself, Barbara Templin, Vice President Keith West, Secretary Kelly Davidson, Treasurer Marlene Avery, and an at large members are Neil Harrison, Kevin Pickerel, and Anita Sively. And I have three of them, plus the band director, <laughs> with me tonight. So they want to make sure I said the right thing. <laughs> Uh, the band directors this year will be John Templin, who will be directing six concerts. Uh, Brett Martinez is uh, going to direct three concerts. Kelly Middleton will direct our last concert of the season. And our first concert will be May uh, 30th at 7.30 in the Band Shell at 9th and Taylor. Joining us this year uh, will be the 35th Infantry Division Army Band out of Olathe, Kansas. Uh, they've come three times before. Had a appeared with us three times. Um, so they, the band will perform four or five selections and then the Army Band will do the same and then we'll close together with the Star Spangled Banner. Or Star Spangled, Stars and Stars Forever, I'm sorry. 
So that's always fun to play with him. So anyway, okay, we'll perform nine more concerts during the months of June and July. Some special performances will be the Flag Day concert on June 14th with the Elks VW, VFW and American Legion. And they'll have a flag display speaker and serve hot dogs. The memorial concert on June 27th, which honors members of the band that have passed on. There'll be also an ice cream social with proceeds going to an instrumental music scholarship at Butler Community College. On July 20th, we will play prior to the food auction at the Butler County Fair, and the concert will be music about critters. So you're gonna have to use your imagination what kind of critters we're gonna be playing at the fair. So, and, uh, so anyway, um, to be eligible to perform in our band, you must be high school age or older. I think you all qualify. Uh, if you have an instrument, uh, Mr. Dillner said he used to play the saxophone, but he can't find it. So, <laughs> so maybe he'll find it. He's in your garage with all your college books. <laughs> anyway, um, so we really appreciate uh, your support for 97 years and would like for you to come and enjoy a summer evening in the park with us. Wow. 97 so. years. Any questions or you can have a hundredth anniversary pretty we soon. Are. We are. We're making some plans for that. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Any questions? That's exciting. Okay. Well, thank okay. you so much for you what will. you do. Well, thank you. And talk to us. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Next on our agenda would be public comments. Anybody from the audience wish to address the commission? Then we'll move on to the next, which would be consent agenda. These items in your agenda were sent to you last week. If I have a chance to look at them, are there any questions or comments in the consent agenda? I'd entertain a motion. I move that the consent agenda as presented be approved. Second. The move is second. Any further question or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. New business. Elorita Inc. annual report. Next on our agenda. waiting okay i think you have a handout too so no the mayor has them all he all? has them all I'm, well he has the next in mind <laughs> i got one thank you, you have one? yeah we were headed that way we got stopped here right. yeah. okay. <clears throat> Okay, um, as you'll remember, we had, um, in late last year, we completed our memorandum of understanding uh, between the city and El Dorado, Inc. And the four main topics of that initiative were the business recruitment, development, proposals, marketing, and existing business relations. So I'm not going to, I handed these out because I wasn't going to read word for word, but to tell you a little bit more about what's been happening with those. Um, in 2018, we saw about $25 million, a little over that, invested in commercial projects in El Dorado. The largest contributors to that would be the BG products and the White Eagle Credit Union uh, projects. but. We saw UTLX make significant investment in equipment as well as upgrades to their buildings and of course they're in the process of hiring. I don't think they're completely finished yet. And then one of the other large events that we saw was the sale of the Holiday Inn Express and Suites. Um, the work plan initiatives that we had have the next 10 items creating a one-stop shop for businesses, obviously supporting our businesses and looking at what our target industries were gonna be, um, working to make 
city owned property shovel ready uh, market our commercial and industrial re real estate regionally and nationally and then working with third parties on the properties that they had available for sale uh, also then to work with the city to upgrade guidelines for fees and processes support efforts to create more <coughs> workforce housing uh, continue in our joint economic efforts in the state and region and then our reporting and measuring on the one-stop shop side uh, last May Scott and I along with the Chamber um, Main Street and Butler Community College went to visit Pittsburgh Kansas to learn about some best practices they were using and one of the things that seemed important to their process was a weekly stakeholders meeting not that this is a meeting that needs to take hours of people's time but five to thirty minutes to go over projects the significance of that is we started in late July there's always been a lot of questions about who does what for a project and this has given us the opportunity to visit the ongoing projects on a weekly basis and talk about what the status is it does um, allow us to track some accountability for what's going on with the project as well as uh, just being more successful and seeing projects get the answers that they needed and last year in 2018 we looked at 44 specific projects a good example of a project was a Main Street project that was we saw a, a business moving and Main Street worked with them on an IWW and a facade grant. El Dorado Chamber worked with their Network Kansas program to provide some gap financing. Um, between the city and El Dorado Inc. we worked to coordinate some code review for them, talked and investigated some historic reserva re historic renovation opportunities and, and possible historic tax credits. I feel like um, we all pulled together and we saw a very successful transition for that business. We also have seen two referrals to that Network Kansas GAP financing program and both of those projects have been funded. So I find that we're, um, we're solidifying our efforts. We're not repeating. We take assignments of projects that need attention and determine who would be best to serve those so they don't have to talk to 15 people. And one of the big things is when they call one person, they don't just shuffle them to somebody else. They make sure to hear what the people are needing. And then we go to our meetings or even prior to that, phone calls are made so that the right party's calling them back and taking care of their needs. And as I said, in some cases it's multiples, but every week on that Main Street project, for instance, we were talking about where are you on this now and how did this work out and what are we going to do on that. So I think that that has uh, been pretty successful for all of us to uh, see that happen. Uh, supporting the existing business relationships, we talked about meetings one-on-one -on -one every 24 months. I. Uh, in my calendar and my work uh, throughout the year, I saw that we, I had personally worked with 29 existing businesses, large to small. Uh, one of the things that we're gonna see by the end of 2019 is that we have purchased this synchronous software, which is a tracking tool for us to be able to put what's going on with these projects in there and then have reporting. And I think that'll be uh, good. We're also starting to capture all of the projects uh, into that software for all of the previous years. So when we're completely finished, you'll be able to say uh, what happened with this project in this year, you know, we'll go to the documents that we have. One of the points to that is we've all, or you've all heard that over time I uh, intend to retire. And I found that there was so much change in all of the organizations in the time that I've been here that a lot of files aren't, aren't whole and they haven't been kept and so forth. And I think it'll be important to be able to say, okay, we did this here, that particular agreement is expiring, what's supposed to happen? Because I know a lot of times we talk about, well, yeah, I remember when that happened, now what? 
I mean, you've got releases that are needing to be filed over time and things like that. They'll all be captured there where you can look it up. And it's a system that's cloud-based so that as time goes on, then the city will have direct access to that and they can, by department, if they want to, put additional information in on those files. So starting to get that built. Um, we had 10 Connect and Caffeinate events last year. Of course, we continue our electronic newsletter and we all attend monthly partner meetings as well as the weekly uh, meeting. Uh, the monthly meetings are more about marketing opportunities, have a lot more to do with coordinating with the Convention and Visitors Bureau and some of the more business related efforts that the community is seeing. Completing targeted industries recommendations. We had two committee meetings last year in about June of last year, David and I looked at a preliminary list of what would be the targets for our community. Uh, we also you know, launched that PEC Industrial Park Master Plan looking at that property out west and how could it be used. At the same time, we had contributed to an extension, El Dorado Inc. had to an extension of the Bragg Strategy Survey, which was with a group called Market Street Services. We uh, contributed input as well as financing to that project to determine as a region what did we see coming. Uh, project Wichita, we helped to host their Butler County Focus Group. DCI was a, an initiative that was coming down about how to attract talent in the area. Those results of those program or those initiatives, except for the PC Master Plan, were all revealed in February of 2019. We still need to do some work to come back to you to see do you have additional uh, things that you identify, do you agree with this list, and then in turn talk to some of the other groups and organizations to determine if that's where our target is going to be. For instance, in this, one of the things you talk about is wanting to sell water, and of course, food manufacturing is an industry that uses a lot of water, so that's why something like that was added to the list. Um, we also talk about working to make the city and Inc. Uh, own property shovel ready. Of course, that's been the PEC master plan. That is a shared cost between Elder and Inc. and the city. The ALTA survey, of course, is done, which gives us a lot of answers. We're all working to resolve those title exceptions or any of the other um, things within the, sur within the survey that we need to do. And of course, you've approved that final uh, master plan. Doesn't mean the work's over. There's just a lot to it and a lot to do. And we've learned a lot along the way. Um, to market our industrial real estate regionally and nationally, I gave you some handouts. The first one that was this 2018 annual report gives a little more detail about specific things that El Dorado Inc. had done last year. The second one is a marketing piece that was created just in the last few weeks. It, uh, the story behind this particular piece is that one of the Wichita um, economic development uh, group went to um, a trade show where site selectors were present and one of the site selectors that approached them were, was looking for communities with water because they consult and recruit for food processing companies. So um, Andrew, Andrew came back from that visit and contacted me about information about El Dorado, our availability of water, and these West Industrial Park sites that we had. So we put this together. You'll notice there's a lot of information in here. There's information about population, education, labor data. Those are things that we've learned along the way. I think a good explanation of what our water supply um, has to offer, you know, in just bullet points. And then just the unique significance of El Dorado and how we can compete. Uh, keeping in mind a community of 13,000 people and you get someone that's coming in that needs several hundred employees, it would be hard for us if we weren't located where we were to be able to meet their needs. And so this gives a, a good indication that within 30 minutes there's 344,000 people in the workforce uh, in drive time population. So 
we may be small, but we're pretty mighty when it comes to being able to uh, be in an area that has a number of people available. Um, some other things, you know, we continue to represent El Dorado at the regional and state level. We did host a Realtors Luncheon last fall. It's time for us to do that again. We got a lot of insight from those Realtors at the time. Uh, we do continue to prepare the responses for information, and we do also maintain the relocation guide for the city. Uh, some significance to that is that with the discontinuation of 360 this month, it, I thought it would be down last month, but in the next week or so it will be. And there's an opportunity for people to go to the ELDOKS site, be able to look at the relocation guide and understand who they need to call about rentals. Um, and I think that's one of the probably harder transitions that we're going to have with 360 being discontinued. I had some phone calls today about it uh, in the office. Also, working with the third parties, as we respond to the request for proposals, oftentimes we're responding with properties that aren't owned by the city. I mean, the city's role in that is to provide the infrastructure, but they're asking for 200 acres or 50 acres or 40, and sometimes those are third parties, and we are working with them. And uh, as time goes on, we just really need to get better about what we know about their property. As we can tell from spending the funds that we've spent to do the West Industrial Park work, uh, we need some of these partners to be doing the same and have some of the same answers that we have now if we're going to be competitive. We can always send the information in, but it, we need to be, we need to understand well enough to be competitive because the next group of questions that they ask after those first ones are the hard ones. Uh, we just continue to market or to uh, monitor some of the things going on with the auctions and so forth. And then we did have a redevelopment opportunity for this JB Investments this past year, but they opted not to move forward. Um, so we are continuing to work with the third parties on the development side. Um, as you know, tonight you're going to talk about your pricing or your um, real estate uh, sale policy. We've got the new tax abatement policy done. Uh, we continue to talk about water marketing strategies. And then I was a member of the team for the REAP Economic Development Incentives Group. Um, on the housing side, we've completed the projects uh, on Walnut Street. They are available uh, for rent. On the 2017 MIH project, we, I think, will produce five single-family homes. Three have closed so far. 14 new rental properties with a total of 22 in that Greiler edition. Um, we're just weeks away from the decision on the 2019 application for the 32 new single-family homes using the tax credits. Uh, through KHRC that you have that pending contract to, for sale of property on. And uh, we are working with a prospect that's considering doing an infill of four senior duplexes. Um, we continue, as I said, to participate in the joint economic development efforts um, and are actively engaged in, in those organizations. And then on the reporting measurement side, um, each month, uh, David attends the El Dorado Inc. Advisor meeting where we do a full overview of the projects we're working on at the time. But weekly, in addition to the partner meeting, David and Scott and I had started meeting at the first of the year to discuss the pending projects again. Uh, I think that synchronous software is going to be a good uh, reporting piece. And in lieu of having it ready, we still need to create some type of a written report for you. Uh, David gets the project information in writing, but it wouldn't be something that you wouldn't want to see 12 of them. You want to see something more uh, put together, and I just haven't worked with him to do that, and that's on me. So otherwise, we had a nice visit from the Economic Development Administration. They had granted us a million dollars a number of years ago for the BG Products uh, project. They came out from Washington, and we had a day with them. It was a pretty exciting time to show them 
uh, what their million dollars had done, and I think they were uh, impressed by that. You'll see in the handouts um, that there's a piece about opportunity zones. Obviously, we were selected as an opportunity zone last year. We held a, in late December, we hosted an informational event. We do have one opportunity fund so far. I have had a second uh, request for information for one, so we may see the second fund start. Uh, of course, we, the project Wichita, the Market Street, we were involved in all of those, and then David, on behalf of the city, and myself for El Dorado Inc., did prepare information for KDOT this year and talking to them about um, their transportation funds. We're working with the Workforce Alliance and Susan B. Allen on a retained grant that they received. It has to do with um, work comp opportunities for people that have been hurt on the job and training. Uh, I was a co-chair for Butler for Butler, and we have been working with USD 375 on some future plans for them. So take questions if you have any. I, questions, how long is the, the opportunity zone, once you're awarded that, how long is that in effect for? Um, actually, the program runs 10 years, but the initial funds to maximize it, it had to happen within the first three years. I think in our actual, I have to look at my date again because these, so they can defer their gain until December of 2026. But they get the most benefit if they declare, was it the end of 19? declared by the end of 19. But then if they hold that property, Nick, for 10 years, any gain they make on that investment, they pay no capital gains on. It's not just deferred, it's right. done First, away. you get to defer and reduce the basis by up to 15% if you get in soon enough. And then at the end of 10 years, like 10 years in one day, if you sell any, any gain that you have, uh, has no capital gains tax. tax but there is a point at which you do have to pay taxes. Right, the 2026 date, you pay your, your original capital gains less the basis adjustment, which is, can be up to 15%. So you get this seven year period of time, you don't have to pay it. So you've got seven years to invest that, make money on it, get a, a rat, you know, it ratchets up the basis. So you only pay 85% of the tax, but you have seven years to save to pay it and use the money in the meantime. So. Hell of a deal. It is. For the right projects, it definitely will be. So, other questions? And a good location in the map. You see the map in here, what the footprint of the city is. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Nice for our downtown projects and things like that. So, other questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Linda. Thanks mm -hmm. for the work you're doing. You're Next on our agenda is item 17, tennis court um, agreement. <clears throat> Say a few things here. I uh, this tennis court agreement is is with the company who we are a sub consultant to. We have uh, all the declarations and and. Uh, such for conflict of interest have been declared and it's all um, taken the legal path for our, our firm to be either considered, but we're again, we're a sub-consultant. Um, I did say that I would abstain from this and I will do that, um, but I wanted everybody to know that, um, <coughs> just, just to assure them that the legal steps were there, let that conversation go the direction mm -hmm. it's gonna go. Um, at this point, I would step out of the room for that conversation, and Kinder, as vice mayor, I'll let you take over the meeting. Let me know when you're done. Who's talking first? You are. <coughs> well, before you, before you this evening, um, as we spoke in our work session last Wednesday, is a <coughs> proposal from professional engineering consultants for the design of the El Dorado Tennis Court Complex. 
as you all are aware, we went entered into agreement with USD 490 to construct those tennis courts at um, the North Main Park. A committee was put together of six members, two being from the city of El Dorado, um, three from USC 490, and one at large um, to review the submittals from the consultants. Um, Sixteen firms were uh, mailed out um, notifications of, to submit. We had five that actually submitted. So that team, that review committee, reviewed each of those submittals and rank them based on criteria um, as presented in the, in the uh, agenda item this evening. With PEC's proposal, this is for preliminary design services with a cost of $22,000, which is, will be billed at an hourly rate not to exceed $22,000. Within that preliminary design phase, um, we'll establish a kickoff meeting, which is, which is scheduled soon. Um, potentially, because the goal in this was to fast track this to, um, from the onset to get it available, at least the school district's desire to make it available for the fall of next school year. Um, so within these preliminary di design services, we see kind of a high level master plan in North Main Park, how this tennis court complex will tie into the rest of the existing amenities and maybe even some conceptual or proposed amenities that we may see in the future of North Main Park. Um, coming from that will be three design concepts that will be presented to both boards. Um, and they'll look at the concourses, the bleachers, the tennis courts themselves, the realignment of the pedestrian, the bike path through the park, um, storage concession buildings, restrooms, parking, and landscaping. So tonight we're, uh, before you're asking to authorize the city manager to sign the agreement with PEC. I notice this agreement is only with PEC and nowhere in any of the documents is Gravity Works or Multicon mentioned. Correct. And that is because? They, um, in, in their proposal, they submitted to the city of El Dorado that I identified as an architect. Um, so what this project will need an architect for is if we do build new restrooms or modify the existing restrooms and the concession storage building, whatever comes of that that we talked about. Um, and then Multicon was the contractor they proposed to kind of do a design build phase of this to fast track that. So um, the, the city, this being a unique project for the city, typically we do design bid build, but uh, proposal like every most of most of the reviewers were comfortable with was the design built to get it going quickly. So what you'll see before you tonight is this preliminary design. After this, there'll be other proposals come before you, which will be the final cost estimates for accepting final cost and, and final design and those sorts of details. Okay, and what did you say Multicon did? Build tennis courts. They built the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. And so grab Gravity Works involvement would just be restroom and concession stand. Design. Correct. Design. And, and Nick Stave with PEC is here this evening. If, if you have any specific questions of him uh, on that, but that is my understanding. I guess that just that was mainly my question was how involved Multicon and Gravity Works. They're basically subcontractors to you, right? That's correct, yeah. They were the prime on there, and then we'll subcontract and have a separate agreement with them to do the different So Multicom's the actual construction company. If, if you go the design builder route, yes. correct. Which we necessarily haven't finalized yet. This, this is talking about preliminary design, so we'll see a cost estimate for design build approach, to get a better understanding if we're comfortable with those costs and the schedule and the way things are looking. I think the recommendation from the reviewers would be the design build approach. Multicon will be involved with the preliminary design just so that way we can make sure that we're designing it appropriately so the cost stays down. You know, it depends if you do courts and groups of two versus courts and groups of four and you tie it all together, we're doing post tension concrete. That could affect the price, you know. So separating those apart, things like that or where this contractor will help us keep the cost in line through the preliminary phase. So when you presented this to the school board, were you there on that one? I was not. 
Was there anybody that presented it to the I, school I was board? there. Okay. Did anybody tell the school board that Gravity Works would be involved with it? I don't recall. I don't recall mentioning that. I, I, I can't recall. When the scorecards were, were presented, the people that were doing the scorecards, did they know that Gravity Works would be involved? In yeah, it? the reviewers. The reviewers it was did. In the paper. It's it was, there was a declaration that, that they were going to yeah. be in there. Here's their mm -hmm. quality. Oh, so we haven't seen that. So. Oh yeah. Well, I, I had I had to ask for it. Yeah. And, and the school and the school board didn't see all those either, as far as I understand. Also. And I got another question. When the scorecards were all done, this is why I asked to see a copy of the scorecards. You were the only one I felt was truthful with it. The other ones kind of knowing the gravity works was involved with it, kind of changed their view of it, but you said you gave them a three. He gave Ellis a three. No, he gave them a three. PUC, he gave it. Well, the, the way we see a one, PEC a three. So oh, yeah, I see what you're saying, yes, okay. Why would you have a hesitant on PEC if they were, that's, because you're going to have to work with them whether we vote them in or not, you're going to have to work with them. Can you work with PEC? Yes, I think I can work with any of these firms. And that's why this was done independently. Each reviewer reviewed these independently and ranked these score sheets. Um, so there was no influence um, at all. Um, yeah. And in the past with PEC in the city, PUC has not been on time with stuff. If this happens with this time-sensitive project, what's going to happen in August when they turn around and say, we can't get this done in August? Well, you know, in the next proposed, in the next agreement that we put together, there is certainly you could put liquidated damages or something to that effect in that we would want delivery of these courts by this date or look at giving them so many working days if we do do the design build phase of this. Um, it's pretty common. All city construction contracts you guys, we enter into, have a liquidate, liquidated damages provision in them. But the contract currently provides that PC has to provide a conceptual design to both bodies by May 15th. So I mean, that's pretty quick. So. They have a pretty quick timeline in order to turn this around. So, I mean, if they don't meet that first deadline, we're going to know, and we're going to we're going to be on their doorstep, knocking knocking on the door, making sure that this project's in on task. I mean, obviously, that's what they're going to do, and that's what they're going to have to do to fulfill the needs of the time sensitive nature of the project. I think all of the parties understand that we want the project to be built in time for next year's tennis season. So time is of the essence in this project, and you know it's gonna take PEC and whoever they work with to make that happen, as well as some staff oversight, so. I realize the mayor is saying this is not a conflict of interest, but it's just the perception. That's what the problem is, it's the perception. I went out and asked people about this project A lot of people felt like the mayor should resign if he's going to bid on stuff that the city's going to do because he had, but it's not a conflict of interest, it's just a perception. If we vote yes for this, the public doesn't know the difference between concept or conflict of interest. They just know that we allowed the mayor to take money from the city. And that's where this public is going to have problems with this, with this commission. And that's where I'm at right now. These, these procedures, these declaration procedures were put into place for, in my opinion, for small towns like us, where there are gonna be times where you're gonna have conflicts. And I don't want, it, it wasn't meant to, to put a blacklist saying, okay, this company, this company, this company, this, they can't bid on any city stuff or they can't do any business with the city because why wouldn't you want to do business with your own, 
with the people that live here and work here and pay taxes here. And you, I want to do that. And as long as there are procedures in place that, and like Vince said before he left, he, whatever declaration needed to be, he has done, and I assume he has. Uh, that's why those procedures were put in place. So in these smaller communities, you can do business with, with your neighbors. And I, I also look to the fact that the school district has worked with Gravity Works before, so they, they know how they work and they're obviously pleased. To the tune uh, of ninety yeah. million dollars, and what are we talking for restrooms in a concession stand? Fifty, eighty thousand? Maybe hundred, one hundred, hundred fifty thousand dollars, roughly. Yeah, but that's the whole thing. I yeah. mean, what's it going to cost to design it? Five grand? Uh, his, yeah, yeah. Could I make one comment? Certainly. So I reached out to Vince on this just. And he didn't reach out to me. I, I reached out to him because I wanted somebody that knew the community better than I did. Exactly. And I feel like Vince has a really good handle on that. And that's, that's why I wanted him on our team. Even though the scope, we, we may not even need him when the, when the final scope is done, you know, once the preliminary design is there. But I thought it would be good to have that knowledge. I mean, I've done a lot of parks in the city of Derby, all of their new parks right now. And those have been successful because the, of the community. It's not, you know, I'm not just going in and designing a park for them. I'm listening to the community and designing the park around what their desires are. And that's, that's what I'm looking for with this. You know, this is a, a fast track project, you know, to be able to get it um, built in time for you guys to open it. But um, having that inside knowledge is going to be critical. Plus, we have, we have a partnering entity on this, too. It isn't just us. Mm -hmm. It's USD 490, too. And... Um, if this has to go back to them, I mean, there's no way this can be ready in August, is there? No. And that, that's very important to them, I think, from what I understand. I haven't been to any of the meetings, but... I'm, I'm, I've got, I've got, I, I expressed how I felt on, on Wednesday, but since then I've, I've kind of processed some stuff and put some things through, and Greg is right. I, I'm, I, I was very disappointed in your guys' performance last time. I mean, I, I really was. I, we were expecting it in, in November. We didn't get it to, what, almost February, something like that, and I kept getting reports back from staff that it wasn't ready, or we got it, it wasn't, sure. wasn't what we were looking for. Sure. Um, <clears throat> My other point, my other thing that really concerns me is it took it took you to get three companies together to get to the same accreditation because I read all of the I read all of those, mm -hmm. and it took you three companies to get to what the next the next one can be at okay. when it comes to level of level of qualifications. Mm -hmm. You you guys aren't certified by the American Playground or whatever that is, American Recreation certification. Your subcontractor is right um there they are they are one company everybody working under one hand mm -hmm. to make that happen um that's what they do all over the country um that's who was presented to us when we first discussed this and i asked the question who was gonna who are we gonna talk to about designing it mm -hmm. so everything pointed me towards this and so when you come up and it all of these variables, all of these pieces together to make, to get to the same level, mm -hmm. um, that bothers me. Sure. Second is I'm the one that brought up the fact of the perception that our mayor, one of five people, um, can is does have a conflict of interest. He's declared it, so he can still do it. Don't get me wrong; it's not illegal for us to use, for you to use him and we to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a it, it's a perception, um, and weighing all that together. My vote is going to be no, and I would prefer to use Hellas and not not uh, not give you that opportunity to, to screw this up for us. I guess is where I'm going. My, my head is at. Um, I'm sure in the future we'll work with you again, but and you might even win this vote. But I personally, um, I, I would like to see what 
I saw what you could do last year. I'd like to see what someone else could do, and then try to judge against that. Uh, on the you know on our past performance issue, we recognize you know there was some issues with that, and those we have reorganized how we approach projects here, Good. and those people are not involved on this anymore. Well, I mean, it's a different type of project. It's so, a different type of project yeah. too. So I mean, I, I wouldn't expect the same people to be on it, but I'm just saying this mm-hmm. is that at some point or another, you know, it, you, they, there has we have to say. Um, no, time out, let's try somebody else. So um, that, that's where I'm at. Okay, question. I guess Scott, David. PEC was going to work with Gravity Works and Multicom. Hellas was a proposal all by itself, right? That's correct. Did that cover everything that we were asking for? Just in, in my review of it and the way I ranked it, um, they didn't identify an engineer. They didn't identify an architect. Um, those were my concerns. Um, others may have seen it a different way. Um, I, th- I think you look at the other the other four. They all identified similar. You know, others brought architects on board with their engineering team. Um, um, PC was the only one besides Hellas that had a construction company as part of theirs. And had the certification, right? But but you're exactly right. If if you choose to go with PEC or not, if you go with Hellas, we're going to also have to contract with an engineer because there's going to be some utilities that are going to be relocated. There's going to be some sidewalks. That are going and to be, we're going to have to do that. Yeah, that's not included in Hellas's proposal. That's what Scott was alluding to. They're 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 a contractor. They're not a design consultant. So they so then why did we then why did them. we go to them. Why do we even send it out to them if they couldn't do it? I, I would have to ask something. You know, I, I think I think the capabilities are probably there to pull a team together to make that exist. But when we send these out and when we invite f- these firms to submit qualification <coughs> statements to us, we get pretty specific on what we want to see in there. And I believe you guys have seen that letter where we say uh, we have these concepts and, and you know, Please name your staff, your engineer, your architect, and all this. So they, you know, we're asking for all that so we can review that. And, and that, that was asked on this project? Right. I didn't see that. So did the MKUC provide you all the information on the relocation utilities and all that? Well, we're not to that part, though. But they identified, they identified a pathway towards that. They identified a schedule, just like the other, other four firms. Outside of Hellas. But they didn't, but Hellas did not identify the engineer they were going to use or the architect they were going to use, correct? So does that mean they, they're they going to have to go out and hire one or we're going to have to hire well, one? I mean, the, the, what we're here to, you know, the committee reviewed this and the highest rank came out of that was, was PEC and their proposal. I think if Hellas would have been identified as the highest, you know, we would have had those would have had those communications with them, talked a lot about that, and then you guys would have seen a proposal here tonight from, from them. But, you know, when it came back to scoring um, ranked PC the highest, called Nick and we started talking about the, the schedule. We started talking about how are we gonna break up these design pieces of this being a design build potentially. Um, so no communications with other firms were engaged to that level. I guess I have trouble using the conflict of interest as a reason to vote against this. We all have a conflict of interest. I have a conflict of interest uh, on several things and have recused myself from it. I have to agree with Nick. Hometown people are important. And for a community this size, we have to be able to utilize those people. I mean, we push shop small, you know, shop local. Well, this is the same as shopping local. It's important to our community to involve people within the community in what we're doing. And if people want to believe that, not believe in the conflict of interest by recusing himself if they believe that we're going to vote yes 
because he's the mayor, then maybe Nick and I need to... I'm not going to base my vote on perception. There you go. I'm okay. not going to do it. I mean, That's it. If, I'm, if I'm perceived as doing something... I don't know what the word is, but to hell with it. Because my conscience is clear. I'm going to base my vote on track record. Well, you always give somebody a second chance. Yep, but I'm going with track record. Thank you for your time. I think we're done. It sounds like we're done with you. <laughs> I have a I have a procedural question. All right. Um, does this require affirmative action? Yes. So, given the fact that there's four of you with the mayor's abstention, you'll need three votes in order for this to be approved. If you have two or fewer, it will not be approved. Okay. Any more discussion? Yes, I have another procedural question. So, if it's not approved, then does it go back to the committee? Or, I'm just, because I, I don't know, I'm just asking. Just yeah, what I would recommend we do, first of all, as a matter of procedure, you are only voting on the PEC proposal. So if you do not approve the PEC proposal, I would recommend that you authorize me to go back to Sue Gibbons and we formulate a, a plan to come back to both bodies. I mean, that could be a joint meeting, it could be um, a committee of the whole or, or something, but um, I would not recommend you seek to approve the next proposal, Hellas's, um, because then if you approve Hellas's and I go back to Sue and she says, well, we wanted it, Schwab, for example, Schwab Eaton, then now we're going back and forth and we're not going to get anywhere. So if you do not approve this proposal, I would recommend you authorize me to go back to talk to Sue and work out a plan to figure out how to move forward. That's what I would recommend. Okay. Any additional comments? I would entertain a motion. I move to authorize the city manager to sign the agreement with professional engineering consultants for the design of the El Dorado Tennis Court Complex. Can you not second? Can I second? Sure you can. Yeah. As vice mayor? Absolutely. No. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion is denied. Right. Motion fails. Fail. Thank you. Hey, Matt. Matt? Yeah. We're not done yet. Oh, we're not done yet. I'm sorry. I thought we were. Sorry. Now we got to authorize David to go on with that. Do we need to vote on that? Or just yeah. give direction? I mean, we have give you direction on what to do? I think I'm going to do that. I think we have to do that anyway. To me, the only, does it, only option Does it take a motion to, to authorize you? I don't think so. Okay. If nobody has a problem with it, then we'll just do it. I'll just do it. I think your only option right. is to go back and talk okay. to Sue. Okay. It's my mistake. We are done. <laughs> All right. Let's do this again. <clears throat> I guess I can report to you that the motion failed. Okay. 
Motion failed. And we have no uh, vote. Yeah, the, it failed on a 2-2 two, two vote. And we have instructed the city manager to, uh, excuse me for jumping, no <laughs> to uh, go back with the uh, superintendent of schools and okay. see what they want to do. Um, okay. I guess at this point, what uh, can I ask? Um, was it our firm that was the sticking point, specifically? No, it's track record of PUC. Multiple things. He voted on track record of what the last performance we got from PUC. Um, I, I voted against for the fact that it took three companies to get to where one company could be. And I felt that we had a better proposal from somebody else. Okay. With, with the contention of, yes, the the thing that we discussed on Wednesday. So, what I'm hearing is, if our firm was not a part of this conversation, the vote would be the same. Yes. Yeah. Come again. Yeah. If our firm yeah. was not a part of this conversation at all, the vote would be the same? Actually, if, if, you're, if your firm wasn't part of it, then I think my thought process would have would well, here's what I want to do, because I think it's way too important for this project, for whatever confusion and animosity might be about our firm being involved, for it to get in the way. Because this project was about moving forward so they could play tennis on it this fall, and we all knew that going in. So if that's the case, I would ask that we revote, take my firm completely out of the conversation. I'm no longer a conflict of interest in this conversation at all, and we ask and we, and we talk about this again. Is that something we can do? I don't see why not. I mean, if it's PEC, really, they have to agree to that. But under the rules of governance, you can do that. Finally. Well, wouldn't the, wouldn't the proposal change at that point? At this point, well, the proposal is is all PEC. Even everything written in here doesn't even mention my firm's name here. We were a subconsultant. And that's correct. The proposal that is right now before you does not mention his firm by name. Now, their proposal that was submitted did, um, but this agreement does not necessarily do that. So... Can, we're not actually contracting with Gravity Works or Multi. Correct. In this situation. Correct. We're in contract with PEC. So, in the event the mayor agrees not to be a party to, to PEC's contract and the commission's cool on that, then this contract will be between the city and PEC. That would be correct. In the interest of the project and to make sure that the tennis courts and all this thing was ready to go when we all agreed two months ago with the school district in a 50-50 split, that that's what would be the effort. I'm telling you we'd lose a month at least just trying to jimmy around and get other school, other boards to approve this. If that gets this project moving, I'll step out and let's, let's vote on it again. I'll not step out. I'll remove our company as a consideration and uh, let's vote on it again. We'll wait for Greg to return. Uh, but that's what I'd like to do. If that's fits in protocol, Tabitha, we're not out of bounds by, I'm not, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to call for this question again without consideration of Gravity Works as being a part of this project and allow it to proceed on its timely basis. Um, so. <clears throat> I guess we'll wait for Greg Did to return. US 490 take into consideration that Gravity Works would be part of the team? I mean, would that have been one of their reasons for I, also voting yes? I was not at the meeting when they were, um, when the presentation was made with respect to this proposal, Scott was at the meeting, um, so I, don't, I can't represent whether they discussed that fact or did not discuss that fact or, or not. I was at the meeting, so I would turn yeah, to Scott. Yeah, and I couldn't even... <clears throat> Um, I couldn't even tell you the individual's reviewers if that was consideration of theirs or not. Um, specifically, that's why we did this independently and we did not you know, sit around the table. And, and we do that purposely so th that one person can't try to influence another or whatever. We want you to independently review these submittals and, and take into consideration. Uh, the school district has history with, you know, both with this firm doing 
doing work on, on some of their projects as well as some of the others. So I'm sure some of them are aware of other other firms besides PUC, besides Gravity Works. There, there's other firms within this mix that have done work at the school district here recently. Okay. And the school district also has done work with Hellas, and so that may have also factored into some of their their observations. So I would say that both governing bodies, in talking to Sue, both governing bodies had experience with both firms that were kind of at the top. One viewed in one way, and the other viewed in another way. Here's where we are. So, but I mean, to your point, unless Scott says differently, I don't think it, I don't think the Gravity Works issue came up. I don't think it was verbalized in the last meeting. Now, if individual Board of Education members had it in the back of their mind, that, that could have been the case, but it was never, at least as far as as I understand it. it yeah, it was more. It was t it was more talking about. Pat Ford and what was in the proposal as far as the design elements, it wasn't so much of a review of the submittals because the committee was formed to do that, to bring <laughs> that highest vote getter to both the commission and the Board of Education. So there wasn't a lot of discussion at all in, in that realm. It was more of what the scope was in front of them for the preliminary design services for the tennis court and the schedule moving forward. That was the that was the dis point of discussion. Okay. Well, are there any more questions on, uh, and I will make the motion that we uh, approve that proposal, sans any conversation or any kind of commitment with Gravity Works architecture, and approve the, the, uh, the proposal presented by PEC. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, any further question or comment? If none, <coughs> all in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, same sign? No. No. Motion carries three to two. Thank you. Move on to lake debt authorization. This is an exciting thing to do. It's actually historical. So uh, we've been talking about this for a while, and I am honored to be at this seat when we make this decision. Was that just legal? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. <clears throat> the action for you all here today is to take approximately $8.3 million. Um, it's obviously not exactly, it's a little over $8.3 million uh, that the city has been actually saving up over, well, the last three, so, three or so years um, to pay off future stages of late debt. Um, this, these amounts were actually set aside to pay off, just to give you a kind of a little quick, quick history lesson. You, stage one was given credit for the two lakes that were already in existence. Stages two and stages three, the city had been paying principal and interest payments on, which were amortized over a 50 year period uh, from the moment they were activated. And so the city's been drawing water from those two stages, and so we've been paying principal and interest on those two stages. Um, and then, all the water that is not included in stages one, two, or three was defined in the contract as future stages. Um, and the city would begin paying principal and interest payments on the future stages when and if those stages are activated. Until that time, the principal amount of the debt uh, for those future stages would be compounding annually at 3.502% based upon the agreement with the United States from the Corporate so the city's forefathers, at that point, when the lake was built, um, decided to set aside $225,000 to make a payment on those future stages at some point in the future. Um, and so then the future stages would be paid for with that amount that was put into savings, and then secondarily with volume charges that would be assessed on them when they using the water. Um, the city has been attempting over the number of years to not only set aside those funds, but also put them into an investment instrument that would, that would create a yield of return that would allow it to be able to pay off a larger amount on those future payments. Um, we have since adjusted our investment strategy to coincide with a lower interest rate market uh, because interest rates are very low right now. We, we as the city can't get a very good return on, on our investment. But coincidentally, 
the $8.3 million that we have been setting, that we have collected over the years is equal, a little bit greater than, or equal to, rather, the amount for stages two and three's outstanding principal and interest payments that are left on those notes. So what staff is recommending uh, the commission do is prepay stages two and three um, with the $8.3 million, and over the life of the note, that would save approximately $5.9 million in, in principal and interest payments, or I'm sorry, in interest payments uh, for the remainder of those, of those two stages. Um, right now, the city, um, again, sets aside $225,000, but the annual debt service payment that we make for stages two and three is equal to about is, is $440,000. So um, once this is, if, if the commission elects to approve this, next year we will have $665,000 to decide how to reallocate those dollars um, to do that. So in essence, what we're asking you all to do today is to consider action that would, consider action that would authorize the prepayment of stages two and three of the city's late debt um, with the United States Army Corps of Engineers. So I have stand for questions. Great. We've been talking about this for a while. Thanks for the summary. Any this other questions or comments from the commission? Is this at, at what elevation? Um, you know, I'm not altogether familiar with the elevation off the top of my head. I'd have to go look okay. that one. So. What percentage? Is there a percentage of what we would... <clears throat> Um, yes, there is, but I, I think I don't have that off the top of my head. I'm okay, gonna well, that back. I was trying to throw you a softball, but it's 48, 48.7% of the, of the water in the lake. It's what we're paying off. That is what we're paying off, correct. 44, 48, 48.7%. 48 yeah. 48% of the normal elevation right now, that, that lake is actually higher than that, so it would actually be half of the bull right now. So if we said we owned half the lake, we'd be right. It'd be pretty but close. That, yeah. But that fluctuates based off of, yeah. that fluctuates Elevation seasonally and annually. 1839. Yep. Now this is great. I'm, I've been excited for this since last year when we decided to do this. So I am glad to do this. This is this sets up, I, I, isn't it that we, we still have like 10 million left or in our... How much do we have left? I'm sorry. I think there's about 13 million gallons available per day that we have not yet activated. Well, we haven't activated. Right. We're, 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 we're a little bit over. So we are actually paying stage three off entirely, and we haven't, I don't, we haven't used all of stage three. Right. Okay. And we would have to activate any future stage unless we found a customer that would cause us to dip into that, correct? That's correct. Okay. Scott, do you know what we have? Yeah, we have about a million gallons a day of freeboard, so extra capacity from what's already. A million, yeah. roughly. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Anybody want to have the honor of making the motion? I would love to. Mr. Mayor, I move to pay off stages two and three of the lake debt. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further comment? We have a band to play, the drum roll. <laughs> you want a drum roll? <laughs> the water song. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Next on our agenda would be real estate policy, something we've talked about for a couple of different work sessions. Um, and I think the policy is uh, pretty consistent uh, in there if it follows. Uh, David, do you want to mention any more about the real estate policy? So the real estate policy that is being um, recommended for your consideration is pretty much the same policy that we went over the the last time with some changes. Um, as you know, we first of all set the policy that our real estate will be um, 
real estate owned by the city and designated for future development, or with the potential for future development, will have a price that takes into account several factors, most notably market price and cost of acquisition, cost of any improvements, things like that. Uh, but that price can be adjusted based upon a formula that's included um, based upon the taxes that are gen the real taxes that are generated from the property, not necessarily indirect taxes like sales tax or potential jobs or things like that. So we're looking at the real property taxes um, that would come from capital investment on the property. Um, so it can be adjusted as such. Um, anyone that is taking advantage of other incentives would not be eligible for re a reduction in their real estate price unless the commission um, waives that specific um, requirement. Um, in addition, all transactions, real estate transactions, whether that be in the form of an actual sale for dollars or a um, conveyance where the land is given away for free, all of those transactions will come before the city commission um, for review and approval. Um, as well as any leases um, as well. So, and I believe that is pretty much it. So if there's any questions about any of the specifics, those are the key highlights of the policy. Any, any questions or comments? You have some scenarios in there, which we, we also kind of reviewed those scenarios uh, at our last meeting as well. None, I'd entertain a motion. Number, please. 2880. I move to approve resolution number 2880, a resolution providing a real estate policy for the city of El Dorado. Second. Okay, so moved and seconded. Any further questions? resolution so it does not need roll call. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. <clears throat> Prosecutor agreement. David you want to sure. say more about this? Um, so this is the agreement that we have, annual agreement we have with uh, Dana Warner, who's currently serving as the Municipal Prosecutor for Municipal Court. Uh, there were some minor changes that came out of, as a result of the annual review. Most notably, um, we kind of clarified and defined some of the city prosecutor services a little more, a little more thoroughly. Um, and the compensation for professional services remains the same, $3,150 per month or $37,800 a year. Um, the only change with respect to uh, the contract term is that the contract may be terminated by either party, but either, either party has to provide 90 days notice instead of 60 days, uh, and that's pretty much it. So it's pretty much the same agreement. It's an annual contract, so it does go again for another year. Um, Last year was Daniel's first year as municipal prosecutor. Um, Ashlyn and I met with him, kind of discussed a few things and talked about the contract and how things were going. And so we recommend doing another annual contract and then coming back and seeing how it works again in, in another year. Will this always be a one-year contract? No, not necessarily. So I mean, this is just because he's a new one? Right. Okay. Um, what, is, what would be a standard contract? Um, say comes generally back. speaking, three to five years. Three, okay. Yeah. So he's still on probation, if you will. <laughs> well, kind of, and I believe in this contract it does, yeah, it says, and upon negotiation is reducible for an additional one year term. Uh, but at that time, it'll probably be, we'll probably put him in okay. a block. Okay. At one point, we were found ourselves behind in prosecutions, or that's that. Obviously, we're, we're pleased with those are going to yeah, renew this. Right now we're okay. I entertain a motion. I move to direct the city manager to sign the contract for prosecutorial services with Werner Law. Second. 
Okay, it's been moved and second. Any further question? Or comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. First quarter financial report. So, uh, the fourth quarter report, you remember, was kind of long. This one will be long, I promise. <laughs> Uh, there's actually a lot of information in the spreadsheet or the slideshow rather that I'm not going to cover, uh, but it's in your packet for informational purposes. Um, but we're just going to drill down to some of this. So, one of the things that I just wanted to highlight here, and we're going to talk more about this soon, um, the citizen survey. You've kind of gotten a little bit of a touch of what that looked like. Um, what this slide here shows you is. If you take those the questions that were on the survey, uh, they were kind of broken out into categories. Um, and so at the bottom there, you kind of see general streets, transportation, utilities. Those were kind of the general categories um, that the survey questions were, were kind of about. And so this is the only slide that I have about this is in the survey, but it was, it was something we did in the first quarter, so I think it's kind of important to kind of touch on it. Um, what this kind of shows, if you'll recall, if you filled it out, um, the survey questions had um, questions that asked you to rate city services one through five. Um, what this slide shows you is that the negative responses would be those responses that were one and twos. Neutral were the threes and positives were the four and fives. And then those that Mark don't know are the don't knows. So for example, just to kind of give you a, a quick on, on how this interprets, in the general category, 59% of those questions were responded to positively, and 12% um, were, were negative, or one or, two, one or twos on the, on the scoring. Uh, so you can kind of see throughout the, the spectrum of general services that we did, we did pretty well in most categories. Uh, we do have some, some items to talk about and, and look at, for example, code enforcement. Um, but we're going to be, staff is going to be looking at the survey in, in a little more detail and we'll be coming back with, with some thoughts and, and comments on, on what that looks like and things that we might be doing to kind of hopefully make some of these scores a little bit better moving forward. Would David go back a second? Yeah. Like, like on code enforcement, you know, if someone's never had any experience with code enforcement, I mean, I don't consider a... The blue, the 24%, I don't consider that a negative. It's but definitely not a negative. Not negative, audience. but I mean, if they've never had an experience with it, and even the the uh, the neutral part, you know, they've, if they've never had an experience with it, I mean, and that was the highest negative of, of all the categories, the 15%, I think that's 15. Yeah. Right, yep. Um, that's where you're touching people's property. They're either happy you happy they did something yeah, or they're and, not and happy. Yeah, bottom line, something. anyone that's gotten a ticket's not happy. <laughs> I mean, so. Right, uh, but it goes without saying that 648 people took uh, the survey, and I assume that most of those people didn't have code violations. They were probably on the other side of the fence. Mm -hmm. And so what this suggests to me is that um, Maybe there's a little bit more work we can do. It could be as simple as education, what the process actually looks like. But I think the important thing for us to look at is why are the scores what they are and what can we do, what can we do to make them better? I think is really the question yeah. that we want to ask. Um, but yeah, there are some interesting, interesting points, particularly when you pull out all of the results and you start seeing it, because it breaks it down a bit more than, than obviously this does. But that's a good point. So the first thing I want to talk about is commission priorities real briefly. Um, so we had, I think, four or five categories here, community image. Um, and so I'm not going to really touch on these very, very much. On the community image piece, um, a lot of these, the initial discussion will be coming up on May 29th. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the CTC and community branding and trying to get an idea of what that might look like. So that'll be um, coming up very soon. On the parks and recreation side, um, on this one, um, some of this is ongoing, so the capital improvement plan will be submitted to the Park Advisory Board when they have a, a quorum at their next meeting. Um, we haven't really scheduled a joint meeting yet uh, for 
various reasons. Uh, the tennis court complex, uh, the interlocal room was completed, site selection has been completed. You guys considered a proposal today, and design and construction is tend to be scheduled for August 19th for the uh, completion of that. And then the staffing assessment has been kind of informally completed, I guess, with a, dis a discussion to continue through the uh, budget preparation. For business growth, uh, the partner MOUs, Main Street's MOU is scheduled for review on May 29th for this for this body. Um, and then the Chamber MOU, we have Jordan Buxton and I have not started the conversation on that yet. Um, and then you all approved the real estate policy just a few minutes ago. And then the Industrial Park Master Plan has been completed, although now much of the work begins in terms of getting the title exceptions done and really developing a, a marketing strategy uh, for that for that. That land. And then the public safety side, the police department at full employment, um, that's ongoing. Conditional offer has actually been made to one prospective officer, at least as, as I wrote this, and hopefully we have a few more of those conditional offers coming in. Uh, the fire department, uh, their staffing assessment has been also completed, and we'll continue to discuss that during the budget preparation coming up, although no funding mechanism was identified, has been identified <coughs> yet. If you'll recall, the Kind of the bottom tier of the fire department's um, needs were one person per shift, so three, three new firefighters all the way up to, um, well, six was discussed at the commission level, but they looked at a couple other options beyond that as well. The police planning, police facility planning has been put on hold until further notice. What we're trying to do with that is align the planning of a new police facility closer to when we will have bond capacity to actually <coughs> do the project so we don't have a study that sits on the shelf and then becomes um, obsolete before we do the project. And then the equipment and technology strategic plan is, has not yet been started for those two departments. Um, and then I believe this is the last uh, commission party slide, water sales. The Lake Development Master Plan, uh, we will begin discussion on that on May 29th as well. Um, and then because we haven't started discussing it, we haven't really put together a master plan RFQ yet. So that'll be forthcoming as a result of those conversations. Um, and then on the wholesale side, we're still talking to Augusta about a wholesale contract and Holly Frontier about their, their contract as well. And then industrial water sales, we are working with Inc. to develop uh, proactive strategies to recruit some industrial water users so we can tap out the rest of that third stage and begin to utilize the future stages as well. So, before I move on, any questions on any of that? What is a clarified water study? Um, so that is a study that we are looking at for, um, it's an economic development project related to Holly Frontier and some of their operations and NKEC is, is working on that for us so that we can figure out if we can hopefully meet some of their demands moving forward. Oh, so the, the the system that they use inside the refinery, we're looking to provide that? Right. Okay. Capital projects, uh, very briefly, these are the projects that are currently going on in first quarter of 2019. Uh, we've completed a number of these, the police storage building, the industrial park master plan, South Vine paving project, and the first and second street drainage project. Um, there are a few other projects that are delayed. Uh, Sixth Avenue sidewalks, we're still trying to get Union Pacific to cooperate on that one. And Marmonton Road, is that project has actually been led, correct? Yes. Yeah, so I just didn't have the date in here. Ro uh, Oil Hill and Rocky Road is underway. Uh, Douglas Road, the design consultants are, that process is, is kind of being, is underway. And the runway resealing bids are open on May 15th. And we've received bids from the Activity Center Roof Project. Those will be coming before you here before too long um, as well. The McDonald Stadium locker rooms are, have been completed as well as the Riverview parking lot. Um, and there's a bunch of other projects. A lot of those park projects um, are kind of stalled out because of the weather. Um, some of them, like for example, the library park, the playground has been delivered, but we're kind of getting, trying to get other things done before we move on to that project. So it's kind of a process, um, as you can see on, on all of those. And then those continue on. The Summit Park Shelter, we won't start until the fall. Gordy Park Improvements, 
um, for the most part, have been completed. We've got the new new park equipment in there, and we've done some other stuff. So I've gotten a lot of compliments about that park. Oh, but the comments yes. about taking away the merry-go-round. Oh, wait a minute. It, it, wait, you took down the merry-go-round? Yes, it's gone. Oh, no, we've got to put that back. It's got to go back, man. Kevin's gone. I, I, don't know. <laughs> I, don't know they, oh. I, I think I think they took it out because they had to make a repair to it. I don't think it's the plan to permanently remove that. You, you, know, you think it's coming back? I believe it is. Oh, okay. It was it right. was damaged. Right, I'm sure it was. Yeah. It's been there for uh, <laughs> years. <laughs> it was it's crooked. Like for vandals one. got to it. And, and now you can take it. that weird diamond thing out at Graham Park. Yeah, that thing. Can, I, most of us have scars in the back of our legs from that. Around was that? No, one not some park construct. No, it's no. Park. Ground was at Gordy Park. It's right? at Gordy Park. It's at Gordy Park. Yeah. They're still there. Okay, so when I get tears over is the merry-go-round, it will be back. <coughs> is the merry-go-round still in Gordy Park? They hope they can repair. Okay. Yeah. It's a moral imperative that it comes back. We're going to put a Christmas tree in the middle of the merry-go-round. That's right. You notice it's still on the list. <laughs> in the movie, yes, the Christmas tree is still on the list. The it's also not started. I've never seen it. <laughs> oh, but it's not Christmas yet. It, it, it plays a big role in that movie. I'm it's sorry. Why it's, uh, You're fine. <laughs> I'm here all night. Okay. Um, on the utility side, as you can see, the first five have been completed. Grand Park Sewer 1 and 2, Central and Gordy Water Main Project, Stone Addition Sewer Extension, and Holly Frontier Raw Water Main Replacement have all been completed. The note I will make on the Raw Water Main Replacement, the, the main has been replaced or fixed. Uh, but we still have to replace the valve. Uh, the parts are in, but we are waiting on Holly Frontier. They are going to hopefully build a tank to absorb the water hammer. That's been, um, we believe, part of the culprit in some of our water main issues. And if they do that, it will absorb some of that, and that will be, that will be good. So we're kind of waiting until that's done because we don't want to put the valve in and then have some more damage done to it and that sort of thing. So, and then, as I mentioned, the water clarification study is in progress. So the financial summary piece, I'm, this is, I'm going to kind of shelve over some of this, a lot of this. Uh, you have it with you, so as you look at it, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, get in touch with me. But the financial highlights, we've got some good ones. Um, sales tax, in the first quarter we received $667,575. That's up 7% from the, from the first quarter in 2018. And if you recall, 2018 was the highest sales tax year in Eldorado history. So right now, we're trending like we're going to break that record, but knock on wood, um, hopefully we do, and hopefully we don't get derailed between now and then. Um, franchise fees uh, were down 9% compared to the first quarter of last year. If we get franchise fees from um, Westar, Kansas Gas, Cable TV, uh, I believe there's one more. There it is. Which one? AT&T. AT&T. AT so four of them. And then we all, our internal utilities also pay franchise fees, but that number is not included in the 226 just because they're internal customers and not external. Mm -hmm. um, recreational fees were down 11% compared to the same period. Fines and forfeitures were up 15% compared to uh, first quarter of last year. Transit guest taxes were up or down, I'm sorry, down 8% compared to the first quarter of last year. Um, mm -hmm and kind of some new revenue, Butler Rural Electric Civic Center lease, new revenue of 35,400 per year. That started up here. And domestic water sales uh, were down 1% compared to the same period in 2018. Raw water sales were down 29%, and that's primarily due to Holly Frontier being shut down for repairs following an operational incident. Uh, they're our largest raw water customer, and so, when they are down for a little while, that affects our raw water sales. And then sewer revenue was up 1% compared to the same period. Bulk, revenue, bulk sewer revenue was, was up 11% as well. So things are looking good on that front. So so how does that equation work? If, if yeah, sewer water's down, down but down. sewer's up, is that due to fee increases it's like that? Or, because aren't, aren't they tied together? Well, sewer takes in the three months of winter average, so I believe it's... Or usage when? No, the usage is December, January, February. The bills are January, February, and March. Um, the, the sewer is not related to the water sales that are. Uh, 
into the, it's not related to the 29% number. Because no, because that, that's raw yeah, water. No, it's not really, but, it, but we're down 1%. We're down 1% for domestic, but up 1% for... With our domestic, you know, the vast majority of that is outside city customers. So they aren't sewer users okay. of the city of Alderaan. Uh, okay. That probably explains okay. the ra okay. rationale there. All right. That was a good, good, catch, good, good question. Um, and so these these next slides are just all the funds. I'm not going to go through these uh, for the most part. All the funds look like where they should be for the first quarter. Um, in a lot of cases, it looks like we may receive a lot of revenue or we make a big expense in the first quarter or the second quarter. Um, in some cases, we have non-routine either revenue and or expenses. So a good example of non-routine revenue, if it's really called that, is property taxes come in at the very beginning of the year, lumps, big lump sum, and then we get one more smaller check kind of towards, toward, towards the middle of the year. So we don't get it throughout the year, and so it looks like our revenue is really good, um, but it's just kind of how that fluctuates and flows throughout the, throughout the course of the year. Um, first quarter sales tax receipts, as I mentioned, uh, very, very good, 667, 575, and as you can see, that number is um, well above all the others uh, on, that, on that particular 10-year horizon, or trend line, I guess you might say. So we're looking pretty good in that. And then I believe all of these are, are just funds. The major street fund is a good example of those, those non-routine expenses. So we have a cash balance in this fund. We're doing, we're doing things out of the fund. Uh, and then we get our gas taxes come in, and we also make a transfer to this fund. So by the time the year end comes around, our revenues will have caught back up with our expenses, and all will be well in the major street fund. Stormwater. Um, tourism, kind of much the same. We have a big um, cash balance in this fund, so we can spend a little more than we're bringing in on a, on a quarterly basis. Water fund. Uh, and this slide here, I just threw it in for first quarter water sold. Uh, and so what it shows you here is the raw water that we've sold, which is on um, the left, and then the treated water is on the right. And it compares the 2018 in green to 2019 in red, just so you can kind of see what that kind of looks like. Super fun. Um, so questions. I'll let you kind of look at those numbers. In some cases, we have explanations for some of the numbers in terms of Anomalies or non-routine expenses, etc. In some cases, um, we just kind of let the year flow and see what happens. Well, not exactly like that, but we're looking pretty good for where we should be in the first quarter. Compressed gas fund. You sold five thousand dollars more, or we? I mean, where is the the sales? Is that in house? <coughs> um, for the most part, most of our sales are in house, but we do have some. External customers that because they know we have uh, natural gas they can fill up here. Really? Yep. So we're, I mean, more users in town realize that we have it now. We can they can buy it from us now. Is that in it? some cases it's not even customers yeah, from inside traveling the through? Really? Yeah. There's yeah. an app because we have app. a we have a fast fill facility. They don't have to sit there for several Two hours. Three, right. Yeah. We can fill them quickly. Really. Yeah, so for example, uh, when Brad goes to Kansas City to pick up a refuse truck or whatever, yeah. they can get an app on, there's an app that you download and it right. tells you where all these stations are. So people that are traveling throughout the country can be like, oh, El Dorado, and they just pull in and fill up. Really? So, yeah. Works out pretty well. So we track whenever we fill our own vehicles up as, as revenue against the expenses in, in that, that fund. fund. Mm -hmm rather than it just being an ex, uh, operating expense? <clears throat> I mean, I believe, yeah, it's an accounting. I mean, so we're, we're tracking it. We charge ourselves to fill up. Well, yeah, we do. And the reason we do that is because filling up is not free. So we have to buy the natural gas. Okay. So it's got to be charged from somewhere. That revenue's got to come from somewhere. Okay. So, yeah, I was going to say something that I yeah. probably shouldn't. i got to stay in my lane. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the first quarter report? Move on to City Commission and Advisory Board reports. Uh, uh, Parks and Rec met. We did not have a quorum. 
So we chitty chatted for a while and left. Couple questions. One question. When is the sales tax, excess sales tax committee meeting? Their first meeting will be sorry, one moment. May 14th. May 14th. At 530. Okay. Here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sure. Second question. Would you put on air exactly during tornado or severe weather, the city hall is open for? We have it. Yes, I was actually going to mention that. You are. OK, very good. Great minds think alike. <coughs> I pass. Nick? Oh, um, I don't have anything. Um, I did not. Uh, I haven't met with the. Uh, that we met last month, they see, we meet this month. Um, I, uh, it's getting warm, I'm glad to see people out and about. Um, the question I, I had was from the, 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 the walking path out by the railroad tracks and the, the brushed up. Um, it's on hold for BNSF, what's going on with that? So, um, a portion of the of that proposed bike path goes underneath BNSF's um, bridge on the west side of the brush dump, coming underneath on the west side. Yeah. Okay. So um, they have their structures teams involved and, and everything, and there's a a review process okay. in, in this, and they've come back. Um, and said, you know, they wanted the edge of a, of a shed. It, it looks like a shed that we have on the phase two of our bike path. Right. Kind of stone protection for falling off books. Mm -hmm. They wanted it two more feet away from the face of their pier. Um, so those okay. design changes were made um, since what we're hearing now, the flooding in Nebraska, Iowa, and what have you. Yeah, they're we busy. We get immediate responses as we were you know, assisting. So... Okay, so we're, that, that's, okay. That's right. Okay. That's all I got. Um, I guess I would report Inc. met a couple weeks ago, and the primary item of discussion was the budget, uh, which they approved and moved to the City Commission for our consideration. Uh, re Executive Committee meets uh, later this week, or next week, excuse me, and I'll be attending that, as well as I'm um, a have agreed to be a part of a another Project Wichita initiative as that moves into action items. And I'll be a part of the uh, Anchor Institution Task Force. So anxious to learn a little bit more about what that is and what that means. Um, I'd like to also put a thanks out to the Chamber for hosting the prayer breakfast uh, last week. That was a very nice event and um, they do a good job of that. It was good. So all I have. If there's any city manager report other than you gave us? Uh, I got just a couple things real quick. Um, there is some severe weather potential for tonight, and so what I thought I'd do is real quick we talk about when the storm shelters are open and what was available and how that all works. So um, we have two shelters. City Hall will be open. It's actually open now uh, because we're currently in a watch. Uh, but we open City Hall during watches and warnings, and we open the Senior Center during warnings. Now, I tell people, people often ask, what's the difference between a watch and a warning? A simple thing to note is that warning is the only one of the two words with an N, meaning take shelter now, okay? <clears throat> so, that's kind of the way, the simple way of, of doing that. So, watch means the conditions are ripe for a severe storm. Uh, warning means it's, it's happening right now. So um, City Hall again will be open during a watch and or a warning. Um, Senior Center will be open during a warning only. So that will be take shelter now. And that's that's what that is. Um, and then that's pretty much all I have for now. I would say since we broadcast that the city building is open for watches, um, shelter is in the basement, correct? Oh, that's correct. And without elevator access. So for any citizens interested in coming here, 
Just know that there's not elevator access to the basement. Um, and, and if and please go to senior center yeah. if you if you need that they have zero level yeah. entry. And zero, and yeah, the senior center is accessible. So thanks, Scott, for saying that. Um, <clears throat> okay, move on to next item on our agenda would be executive session. How much time, David? Do we, uh, we probably only need ten minutes. I have a question. This is about acquisition of real property. If I wanted to bring up just a flat legal thing, do we have to, just a legal question, do we have to come back out and do another? All right, to hell with it then. You can't. I, that's you can't. fine. I believe you. Oh, I was just going to say you can't have the legal conversation without your attorney. It's not protected without the attorney. Good point. She was unable to come tonight. Okay. Never mind. Ten minutes? Ten minutes. Then you're taking a motion. I move to recess into executive session pursuant to the preliminary discussions relating to the acquisition of real property exception under KSA 75-4319B6 and to reconvene the meeting at 838. Five. 5, 8.35 p.m. in the City Commission Room. Second. We moved and second. Any further questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Five, motion carries 5-0. We will recess in the executive session until 8.30.